Welcome to It's Giving Sucks, the podcast where the line between the intriguing and the unsettling is blurred. Every episode, we dive deep into the world of true crime and scandals, bringing you the most suspicious and jaw-dropping stories from around the world. There's so much crazy stuff going on, and we need to talk about all of it. Bizarre happenings, scams, cults, crimes, or controversial figures, we're here to dissect it all. Nothing is off limits. Join us as we unpack and comprehend this episode's story. And remember, if it's giving sus, stay curious and stay skeptical. Warning, this episode contains discussion of extremely sensitive topics. Please check the show notes for more details before proceeding. We ask that you please take caution when listening. If you or someone you know is in need of resources, please check the episode notes for more information. Thank you for listening. The Rayelians are a controversial religious movement with beliefs that transcend the boundaries of conventional spirituality. Originating in the 70s, the Rayelian movement was founded by a former race car driver and journalist named Claude Vornholm. Rayel captivates attention with his extraterrestrial-centric philosophy. Rayel and his followers believe in a cosmic narrative that challenges traditional religious doctrines. The Rayelian movement is considered controversial for several reasons. One of the primary factors is its belief system which centers around the idea that humanity was created by advanced beings known as the Elohim. Rayalians claim that these beings delivered their message to the movement's founder during these alleged encounters. This narrative challenges mainstream religious beliefs and has been met with skepticism and suspicion. Rayalians are also known for their advocacy of scientific cloning and genetic engineering promoting the idea of using technology to achieve immortality. This stance on cloning has sparked ethical debates and raised concerns about the potential consequences and ethical implications of such practices. The Rayelian movement has been involved in controversial events and initiatives, including the attempt to build a symbolic embassy for extraterrestrials. In addition, their promotion of free love and sexual freedom as part of their spiritual philosophy has also been scrutinized. These aspects contribute to the overall controversy surrounding the Rayelian movement, making it a subject of interest and skepticism. Welcome back to another episode of It's Giving Sauce. Are we on seven or eight? I forget. I think it's seven. Could be eight. We don't know. (laughs) <laughs> we don't we're not sure quick shout out to all of our new subscribers it's so cool watching this community build uh, i think we're at like 138 as the time of filming and that's like so exciting for me i have another channel which is my personal channel and it's been like seven months and i have like 97 so i was like a little bit sad i was like damn it's packing me up but then i'm like wait it's still me though it's still good like i'm still involved so i'm not that jealous of myself i guess what's up with you meg you, um, new, you new here I guess so. No, you're not. A fan favorite. We're chickens, according to one comment. (laughs) The two chickens. See, that's just sent me. Someone said these two chickens are awful. I mean... I don't know if he meant me, you, Natalia, or Michael, but I would probably agree. Like, whatever one it is, like, they're probably not wrong. No, No. we're just chickens. I'm so excited for this story we have a lot to go into with this it's a new series it's dubbed over it's originally in french so it's kind of like a lot so i think if we could just like paint the picture and set the details and then like move forward with everything i've watched a little bit of the second one but like it already starts getting good in episode one. The first thing we need to do is a little vocabulary lesson because there's some interesting words going on in this this situation here. So let me grab my notes. Welcome to class. We're going to okay. learn how to pronounce two words today. <laughs> Ry- Rael. Go ahead and say it with me after your Red Bull. Rael. 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 Okay. okay. That is our leader. That is the prophet. That is Rael. And from Rael has come the words 
Rhyalians. Say it with me. Rhyalians. Rhyalians. Yes. And then okay. the, the next word that we need to know is Elohim. And Elohim. I thought it was Elohim. Is it? I don't know. Okay, let me play it really quick because I, I don't want to go this whole series saying the wrong thing. That's why I wanted to do the vocabulary lesson. I mean, I did take French for five years, so. Oh, my God. You can translate for us. Somewhat. Yeah. And <laughs> what? The, the way French say anus. <laughs> what does that mean? Anus. Anus. anus? An yes. You didn't catch that? No. Oh, boy. I was not listening to it in French. Oh, well. Were you? I mean, I could catch certain things, right? Oh, when they yeah. were talking about all the the butt stuff. Oh, my, oh my God. God. They kept saying anus in French, anus. and I was losing my shit. Oh, my God. No. I was losing my shit. So, <laughs> anus. We know how to say that. We can add that to the vocabulary. Thank there you. There you go. That's important. Elohim. Are Elohim. 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 Okay. Elohim and Anus. Elohim. So I had it wrong. <laughs> Elohim. Elohim. That's what I thought. I was like, I don't think the way See, you said it. See, you're the good. French major, not me. Okay. Elohim, Rael, Elohim. Raelians, and Anus. And Anus. <laughs> I'm ready to go to France. What else do we need to know? No. Je voudrais un croissant, s'il vous plaît. Did you say uncrustable? <laughs> Say, basically sure see i'm see, you're fluent. fine i'm fluent i love it all right so now that we have our vocabulary sorted and out of the way we know how what we're talking about here let's <laughs> break into episode one they start off with with bridget and she was introduced to rael and the right in 1993 in france and she's been a Raelian ever since so she is a scientist and a researcher they come in hot with this one like i don't even know how to like whatever like bring up this part but i'm just gonna go she birthed the first cloned baby i mean that's <laughs> impressive true good for her i mean good you for know? her yeah bridget bridget and she's i feel like she's a main character here i feel like she is a big part in this um organization rael likes to refer to it as a religious organization not a cult or a high control group but uh, we'll, we'll be the judges of that um, by the end of the season here. Bridget meets Rael. She starts saying he's the last prophet. That's what Rael claims. And that's, he's a prophet. Um, so she meets Rael and she's like obsessed. She's like his big blue eyes and just like enamored with this man. That was the truth. And she had found her place. She had already been married. She had already had two kids she finds this um she's a woman of science it's interesting to hear her perspective about like all the concepts and it makes sense to her it makes sense she says from a scientific perspective of this whole um genesis i don't really does know what it that means. though i mean, I mean to bridge it <laughs> to bridge it it makes sense to so bridge it. she has a phd in chemistry okay one of her arguments is like something created earth right yeah, and like all Rael of this stuff can't just be spontaneous there's somebody constructing it and that's our creator yes and they believe that the aliens created it i mean if you have a phd in chemistry chemistry is just the way that molecules interact theory is that the way earth was made was that a bunch of different chemicals and carbons got together and started forming organic life so i could see kind of where she gets her, like, where her science brain is like, oh, you know, like maybe someone created this with molecules from space. The connection right. might be made. I could but almost understand how she might believe that. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, we're just very open minded chickens. Yes. Meg West, the science gal. It's a new <laughs> series. Hey, I'm going to produce hey, it. Hey, hey. The episode progresses into more characters, and these are other people who have seen UFOs in France in the 70s. These other people come across this book called The Book That Tells the Truth by Claude, who is aka Rial. We first see Claude Rial on public radio giving his story of how he was walking along in the volcanoes. He was greeted with an encounter of these beings, beings, 
they came down on a ship and he sees two legs walking out. And the guy interviewing him is like, like two like legs, like human. He was like, no, not it, like alien, like green. He said two green legs, right? That's how he finds out that he is the prophet, that the Elohim are trying to contact humankind and they are our creators. So he writes the book called This is the Truth and people who have seen UFOs around that time start reading it and they're like, wow, I'm really connecting with this. Somebody like believes what I'm saying. Bridget said she had conviction because he went on public radio and said things that are really hard to just come out and say, especially without any proof and like knowing you're probably going to get a lot of hate and a lot of backlash and also like the religious aspect. Like if you're like, no, God didn't create us, it's, it's the Elohim. You know what I'm saying? Like he could just he was putting he was making himself vulnerable in that situation so i think that's like why a lot of people believed what he was saying too so we meet gene and gene was driving and there was a tractor in the field and mm -hmm. this like star he says in the sky like went over him in the tractor and then both of the the car he was driving and the tractor in the field like the engines just cut them and the farmer and the tractor like looked at each other and they like both saw it and like that was his like encounter so that's how he was like a believer in um in the the ufos and the aliens and they call it something else now than ufo it's like an ae uh an oh, fuck. unidentified fly uh, and uh dude we need to do more research this is terrible i mean uh, we don't need to know this shit yeah we do We're, we have to know everything an aed no a uap a, a uap what is what is that unidentified aerial phenomena oh the uap so that could be not only like a vehicle or a vessel that could be an experience or something going on an unidentified yeah. phenomenon is what we're calling it these days so so rael he tells us on national television that the elohim are like they're men with with green legs basically they scientifically created us. They are our creators. We thought it was God, but it was actually aliens. We thought it was God. Yeah, we're confused. I mean, I'm confused by all of it. So we've met Bridget. She's the science, chem the chemist. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. We have met Rael, who is um, the prophet from the Elohim, who's had his encounter. And we've met Gene, the guy driving by the tractor, when he had his UAP. Did I do that right? Yeah. That is UAP experience. So. Which he said, which I thought was really interesting. He said that during that experience, the got out of the car afterwards, which why the fuck would you get out of the car? Fuck, God, people are so stupid. And gets out of the car. Ugh, and I know. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm driving so the, fast. Oh, I know. The I'm, car I'm stopped. The car stopped. Yes. Because the engines of both the tractor and the car stopped. So the guy gets out of the car and he's like, he looks at the, the tractor driver. They're both like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what right. just happened? And uh, and then I guess, I don't know, they get back on their merry way. Like after, I don't, like, did the car turn on after? I don't even, I don't know. It's crazy. Crazy. I know. I know. Yeah, he said that both uh, engines like shut off at the same time when the thing like drove by. Yeah, the tractor and the car. Yeah, very odd. And I don't know. I'm not like really too much up to date on like other like encounters and phenomena. And like, if that's like a common thing that like people typically experience when they have these encounters but i also think that like in the 70s there's no phone like what are you gonna do like not you're there's gonna be no proof of anything before like the late 90s of like personal encounters mm -hmm. so there's probably so many people and then they see this book that rael wrote and they're like oh shit that like makes sense of like what i saw and experienced because I have nobody to talk to about this. They're going to lock me up in an asylum. They're like, this guy gets me. <laughs> yeah. They're like, finally. He gets it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what do you think about Rael's like, experience walking around the volcanoes and then his first encounter with the Elohim? Elohim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that shit's crazy. First of all. First of all. <laughs> the volcano part. <laughs> no one just walks around volcanoes. Like, the magma you know. part people like do you ever see the videos of people testing lava and all the fucking gear that they have to wear no. it's crazy yes they have to wear like all this anti like flammable stuff and they're like like 
you know the suits and movies that you see you, you could pull up a picture like you, you'll get one I know you will and it's in like the scary movies where there's like a outbreak of a disease and they come with those crazy suits like a hazmat suit yes but essentially like a fireproof hazmat suit and they have to I wear special hazmat. boots <laughs> They have to wear like special boots and all this crazy shit to be Poor even like lava. near volcano. 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 God dang, a volcano. <laughs> we're so, I'm not okay to be filming right now. <laughs> From lack of sleep. Um, we can buy one on Amazon. Oh, it's called the fire so resistant sweet. suit thermal radiation one thousand. Maybe he just got that and went it's, and went on his on, on his journey, bro. It's one hundred and forty nine dollars. Like I don't. He really ordered don't it off it's... Amazon in the seventies, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like he this... should be able to time travel if he's the chosen one. So he came exactly. He came up, grabbed one of those, went back, went back, <laughs> yeah. had, his, had his encounter, and he's good to go. Exactly. That's or, exactly um... what happened. <laughs> I mean, he knows all. He's the last prophet. Like he, I'm, I'm he's well. he's got hazmat suits on deck. It's really. I'm just still scrolling through pictures of hazmat suits. <laughs> but yeah, but crazy shit, crazy shit. Like, yeah. Let me just, just walk around a volcano. Yeah, it's to start off right. Um, and then he remembers this encounter, which could or couldn't be true. I don't know. Have you ever seen a UFO? No, I mean not that I'm aware of. I mean, I feel like I've seen crazy shit in the sky, like crazy lights at points and like this is when i was in ohio in the middle of like bumfuck ass nowhere right mm -hmm. but they could be shooting stars like it could be um like like a little comet breaking up like i mean there's just so many explanations like so, I, I, so are you no? a believer I, it's hard to say because to me in my scientific brain like how did the earth and organic life come about like it's, it's just it's there's so many different theories and there's just so many different explanations and will we ever know the truth probably not and there's so many different galaxies and so many different universes and we're only like one of millions we don't even know yeah. millions Infinity. we don't know right so i mean i'm not gonna say that it's out of the question that there's other things that exist in a different universe or a different galaxy or fuck even a different reality i mean who the Ooh, fuck? a different timeline who Dang. the fuck now she said quantum jumping i am getting into that shit but i like honestly though i i'm not a religious person and i was raised very religious i was raised in like a catholic school for eight years went to fucking church all the time i think there is other stuff possibly out there other energies other yeah like i don't know just something like right. i just right Right. I mean, that's pretty much like me. It's like mother nature, karma, energies, the universe, like any pretty much anything that I can't like wrap my brain around. I'm like, OK, yeah, like that's probably something going on there. Right. I was not raised religious and I've been to church maybe like two times ever. And I think one was a Mormon church and one was um, Christian. And then, oh, I did go to a Catholic church once because you had to dip your finger in the water. I had no idea what was going on and I used my middle finger. I was like, God damn it. I was like eight years old. I still remember this. I was like so traumatized. I'm like, oh my God, the whole church saw me and I'm just like. Dude, they got middle schoolers drinking wine up in the Catholic church. It's crazy. You know, that's probably where my problem started. <laughs> that one day, middle finger in the holy water. I it didn't mean to. I just Fuck happened. you to Jesus. <laughs> um, but OK, so I have seen a UFO. OK. I was in Arizona. It was about 3.30 in the morning. And I was standing in a room. There's a sliding glass door. And there was like a greenish tinted like star looking thing, maybe a little bit bigger than what a star looks like. And I'm looking at it and someone was in the room and they're looking at it. And then all of a sudden it goes like the fastest movement I've ever seen in my life. That's and then I, we looked at each other and we're like, yeah, we both saw did that. We just, and I was did, like, we just... did we just see UFOs? <laughs> That's crazy. Yes. I definitely believe people when they say they've seen these things. Like, yeah. And I mean, and with then, the government's released stuff recently. Yes, which I've been fascinated with. Um, so I believe that there is um, other stuff going on because like, why wouldn't there be? And like, my brain can't comprehend that. So like, dude, like whales, newborn babies. You're telling me that's real? You're telling me that's not an alien? 
like a, a jellyfish those are like <laughs> how, make that make sense to me or it like doesn't. deep sea deep sea like fish and stuff with Shit, the little we don't light even no with the little <laughs> dingler from finding nemo Shit out of my fucking nightmares like and there's even crazier sense. shit and there's stuff that we, we we've we've uncovered like something crazy like only like three percent of our oceans have been like actually fully like I, I, it's something uh, honestly ridiculous and that we haven't discovered like 70 something percent of the creatures in the ocean i have a phobia oh. of fish i hate the fucking ocean don't ever put me in the ocean <laughs> i'm not going if we're I'm just, in the ocean, I'm, someone did it to both of us. I'm, I'm not just, doing it. No, fuck no. I I go up to my knees and when I go to a beach and there's ocean, a knees only. Knees only. I need to fucking see what the fuck is going on. Hell no. I do like ankles Hell on California no. beaches. Hawaii, I'm in there. I'm a dolphin. I'm a mermaid. I got oh, my hair I've never been, so I can't whipped around. Like, I don't know. I was just it called to me and I was like, this is my home now. I was just <laughs> full mermaid mode. Okay, Moana, you need to relax. Literally, but here, <laughs> I don't even go to the beach. Live by the beach. I can't I haven't been there in three years. Yeah. Not I mean I heard gal. not an outside gal. I love the ocean I love the sound of like ocean. Like I love the waves. It's like calming. But yeah. I just like hate being around all those people. And then I hate sand ocean getting people? in every <laughs> the ocean people. No, the everyone at the fucking beach. There's always a oh. bunch of people. And well, then like going out off time. And then like sand gets in everything. Literally sand in your anus. In your anus. Anus sand. <laughs> anus. Anyways, tell me that shit ain't real. Tell me it's not real. What is even real? You know what I'm saying? Like the Honestly. fact that we can like mate with a partner and give birth to a live human you know what i'm saying so yeah, like tell, tell me that's real you know yeah tell me that tell me anything's real right um <laughs> time an illusion right um so i am a believer i'm not like out there looking i'm not um i just want to be cool with them you know what i'm saying because like if they show up you know that one kid in school that like everybody bullies like but you gotta I, get yeah you gotta be nice to them I'm befriending that man, that person, that, yes. that, that student. So that's how I kind of like, I'm like, all right, like, you know, um, we come in peace. I'm also coming in peace. Maybe if I was born in a different time, I would have been also seeking more information about this. After I had my encounter, maybe I would have found this black covered book called The Book That Tells the Truth. And I think that's a great title. Like, honestly, I'm like a fan of that. The um, book that tells the truth. I mean, it's yeah, that simple. Straight up. <laughs> No, no lies. No, no lies here. No, no frills. Just no so tricks. What it is. All right. So now we're caught up and we know way too much more information about the ocean and UFOs and our experiences and how but, dumb we are <laughs> and how uneducated and uncultured we are like our little pea brains. <laughs> but that's why we're here to really dissect it on a kindergarten level, because that's what I need to understand things. It's just make it make sense on a like I'm five. Tell me like I'm five. Explain so we're caught up. Like I'm five. Gene, our man Gene, who was the tractor UFO man, he is going to go visit Claude, aka Rial, for the first time at his home. After he reads the book, he said he read it twice in one night. I was like, how many pages is the truth? <laughs> like, that's what I'm thinking in my head, you know? It did look very big. It, it's only like... It looked like, like a pamphlet, questionably. Did it really? They showed it a couple times and it didn't look like a... A like Bible? a book. <laughs> you just open it and it's like Rayal is um uh the prophet. The end. Like that's mm -hmm. all it says. He's like, I read it twice. I'm like, God <laughs> damn, speed reading. <Done. laughs> I have this whole wormhole about it. Gene Tractor Man goes to visit Rial, and when he gets there, there's a total of 12 people. So Gene is top 12 Rayalian in the beginning. The moral of the story that Rael has, I almost said Michael Barnett. It's just so fucking stuck in my head. Different one, man. I know. That's why I wanted to do vocabulary. Um, so Rael tells him, like, everything is matter and everything is physics. I mean, that is true. He's, I mean, he's not wrong there. He's telling the truth there. <laughs> he's telling the truth on that one. Yes. Good job, buddy. Gotta start somewhere, you know? Yes. 
<laughs> okay, we meet another character here, and I think this is our last character for for episode one. Thank God, because there's just a lot. Um, it's, is it the government guy? Oh, the investigator. Yeah. Okay, I'm lying. There's more characters. Um, no, this is Damien. This is Damien. This is Damien, okay. and this is in um 83, 1983. He said he was lost at the time. He had no ambition. His life like finally got meaning and like this purpose once he found the um Elohim and the truth and realism, if that's a word. Re um, realism? Realism? I think I feel like it's realism. They're re reali they're reali realians. That part. So um, he, he uh, Damien was eight, was 18 when he joined and um, we meet Nadine. She's in 1980 when she was 18 when she joined. We meet just some of the other characters, talk about their encounters and how they found the group. Um, and then we go into the step one of getting into the cult. I mean, religion. Um, and the step one, once you get to the place where the people are gathering, who are all believing the same thing, they've read the book, they go to see Rael, you do a transmission of the cellular plan. Wikipedia here, that what I pulled up, says cellular refers to the organic cells of the body and the plan refers to the genetic makeup of the individual. Raelian baptism involves a guide member laying water onto the forehead of the new member. Interesting. Yeah, so they basically are like standing in a circle. They're having these baptisms to get all these members initiated. And Rayal does like the water on the forehead. And then he like has his hands on the person and they're transmitting the, in his words, the wavelengths are sent to a computer. And the computer is the computer that controls all the actions. So they're doing all this process and they're basically connecting you with the Elohim, who are your creators so you're basically making like a conscious contact here with with these creators you're like yes i see you and they're like all right we see you too and one member described it as like a a string pulling between like he could feel that connection physically between him and the elohim him elohim um rayal has the hands on the forehead and the neck like this in the water and they transcend or they transmit the wavelengths that's their baptism okay and this is a very very serious commitment it is a lifelong commitment and it has real implications and the underlying motto or philosophy i'll say is that you are committed to the philosophy of rael so whatever rael says you're committed to him and you are swearing in with that water on your forehead that that is your man at that point. And I'll tell you at this point in time. I want to be delusional. Same. It, it sounds like a lot of work, though. Like, there's a, they're asking a lot of them when we, like, go further down. I'm like, ugh, sometimes I just don't want to do that. You know? I don't want to do all that. Can I just be, like, initiated just yeah, like, know, casually, by, giving, like, by giving you, like, a dollar? Like, does yeah. that work? And I'll, I'll tell you now, like. We got a couple members of the groups forming. It's starting. We see a big change in Rayal. Uh, when he was first on TV, he was like clean cut, no beard, nice little shaven head haircut. And at this time, when we see him at the formation of the group, he is like, he went full Charles Manson on him. He went full Jesus. He started he wearing like Jesus. He started wearing like all white. Well, I guess Charles Manson too, but Charles Manson went for the Jesus look as well. But it's all the same, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. He, Cult he leader was, aesthetic. Like exactly. The full starter pack. We got the yes. beard, the long hair, um, the white, the, the linen flowing, and like the thing. And then he's got his chain. He's got his whole I was gonna say chain. That <laughs> and it is a swastika. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on this platform. It is a swastika and a Jewish star inside. It, oh, yes, correct. Inside a Jewish star. Yes, inside of a Jewish star. And we're talking like, like, like Nelly, like, yes. got like a chain. Um, that sent me. He said it's an ancient symbol that was used in Tibetan culture. Yeah, some like some like book of something he says. Yeah. I can't, yeah, we wouldn't get it. Crazy. We wouldn't get it. No. So that's the layout. OK, we got Charles Manson, the full starter kit of the cult leader and the chain. All right. Like that's the visual for everyone who's listening or hasn't watched yet. 
Oh, okay. Do your chain hang low. Don't do wobble through the flow. Can you tie it? No. Can you tie it in a bow? I was in middle school and that song was relevant. Dude, and we were all like, thought we were so hard and, and none of us wore chains. <laughs> I was a I didn't white have a girl. Single chain. I was a white girl in Ohio. We didn't have chains. No chains. So we got the garb. We got the full starter kit. We got the beard. We got the linens. We got the chain. Now we have a couple members. The first mission that we are going to do is start selling books and the books that tell the truth. We go to door to door. Certain people within the group become ambassadors to like help spread the message, evangelizing the movement around and growing and growing and growing. Here we go. Encounter two. Encounter two with the Elohim happens. And this kind of shifts the tone a little bit and the vibe within the little group that they've like so far created. Rael says he actually went and took a little adventure on their planet on a spaceship. And he said it went faster than the speed of light. And he arrives in this wonderful heavenly like place. And the description that he says, it sounds fantastic. I'm like, I want to go to there. And he says, it's so heavenly. There's background music playing in throughout the whole planet. And when you and I talk, the volume goes down. And when we stop talking, it goes back up. So it's like this whole just vibe. Like you're at Disneyland and you're in like, you know, the Western area and you hear some yeehaws in the background, but it's like that throughout your whole planet. They even have it designed where it only rains at nighttime. How convenient is that? <laughs> How convenient. Like just at night. He, um, this one really sent me, you know, I think I instantly sent you a text message saying you need to watch this right now at this part. There were colored squirrels. <laughs> Can you not laugh? This is serious. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. it's fine. This it's fine. Crazy. I forgive you. It's crazy, dude. Colored squirrels <laughs> running around with teddy bear heads. <laughs> what is this? Five Nights at Freddy's on Mars? A teddy bear has on a squirrel body. That would be frightening. I'm out. I, like, kind of cute. They're pink and blue and stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't like teddy bears. They're fucking weird, bro. Maybe he's going to make merch and, like, plushies or something. I don't know. We haven't got. I mean, I would buy a plushie. It'd be cute. Yeah. I think that he said there's pink for sure. <laughs> we could probably get you a purple one. Perfect. So, so Rael comes back from this trip. And he starts talking about this experience. And some of the people are like, are you sure about that? Because um, it's a little out there, you know, like, yes, I believe that you had an encounter and this creature a being life form talked to you and maybe you have some connection with them. But now you're visiting. There's background music and teddy bear squirrels. I'm getting well, a little sussed out. Doesn't he change what they look like too, to say that they look like normal people like us? He's always said that they're like, they're like, they're men. Okay. But then he said like his first encounter, they had like the, the green legs or like the alien legs. So I don't really know. I don't rem remember hearing any of that. He's all over the place though. I feel like. Yeah. It's not really consistent. It's not. Mm. He then says he was invited to have dinner with all of the great prophets. We're talking Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus himself. And Rael having a meal, breaking bread. Last drink, supper. Drinks are flowing, you know? <laughs> they're all alive still on this planet because of the DNA. Something with the DNA, they're able to keep these prophets alive on the planet. And then we find out Rael announces, yes, Jesus was there. And someone asked him in an interview, they said, Well, are you are you are you and Jesus alike? And he goes, Well, yeah, Jesus is my brother. Claude and Jesus that rewrites history I think because there's only like one son I don't know I don't fucking know is his name Jesus or is that like a nickname <laughs> good question I don't fucking We're not know qualified to talk about any of this <laughs> literally someone in the comments <laughs> Retains nothing. 
I said church twice. You Messiah? did eight years. Jesus? Abraham? I don't fucking know. Yes, yeah. Jesus. Yeshua, which translate to English as Joshua. I don't fucking know. Got him. Jesus. Jesus. Joshua. <laughs> Jesus' Yo. real name was Joshua. <laughs> Josh. Big dog. Yo, Josh. Where's my whole punch in the drywall on a monster sponsorship? <laughs> That's Kyle. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Josh could be thrown in there as well. 100%. Sorry to all the Joshes and Kyles. Watch. We're chickens. Sorry. <laughs> We're chickens. We're just chickens. So. We're just fucking little pea brain <laughs> chickens, truly. <laughs> so mind us. Rayal is Jesus's brother. Josh's brother. <laughs> Josh is Josh Claude, and Claude. <laughs> Draw, Josh. Like they're bros, okay? This gets everybody stirred up because this is the rewriting of everything we've ever known, right? And this is the 70s. This isn't like in the 1500s. This is like <laughs> years and decades and centuries of like, this is the story of Jesus and this and this and this. So everybody is like a little bit like, mm, maybe it's a red flag, but they're also making this life commitment. They've been baptized. Like anything Rael says is the truth. They've committed to that. And then you have the other component of a cult, I'm sorry, a group, which is group think. And if you're the outlier, there's 12 people or however many at this time, and everyone's like, oh my God, I believe that. That's so awesome. The squirrels, teddy bears, Jesus. And you're like, um, <clears throat> like I'm not really, you know, like you're when the group setting, you're not as comfortable to like be the outlier and like go against what the group is thinking. I took a psychology class once or twice. So that's another component and how people can like fall into that mindset of like, well, if everyone else is believing it, then I'm believing it too. I think I like, like it was all organized and then I lost my shit at the squirrels. So it just gets <laughs> a little crazy from here on out. But is this when he starts bagging all the bitches too or? The, the plot thickens and we have the antagonist, which is George. And he is the detective and the investigator. And he starts questioning and seeing what's going on. He explained in the 70s that being part of a cult was really like a fringe thing. And if you were in a cult, it was more like hippie, flowery, like peace and love. And they hadn't really seen people or these gurus abusing that power that they were aware of. So this was kind of like a whole new territory. And one of the quotes I wrote down was that it's dangerous when people believe anything and his words are the truth. And that's the whole like foundation of realism of yep. like, I, this is the truth and you believe me, water on the head, boom, boom, wavelengths out to the, to the Elohims. Like that's the whole foundation. There's one leader, he's the prophet, he knows everything and everything he says is the truth. I mean, he's the author of the book that tells the truth. Like what, I don't know like why there's any questions there. The rights within a religious group or any sort of group, they have, they were within their rights as long as they are not harming anybody or society. The detectives like investigating, but not, we don't really know too much of like why or how he got involved yet, but they did introduce us to this character. We began our awakening experience. And the first thing we need to get oxygen to our brain in order to awaken. <sighs> Hello, wake up, get the oxygen flowing. And they start doing meditation. And Rael leaves the group with some really profound words and mantras to live by. And maybe this is lost in translation, but tell me if this makes sense to you. If you want to remove the pants from your head, you must first remove them from your ass. That's his quote. I I, I remember that and I was like, oh, you have to remove your your butt pants to remove both your head pants yeah <laughs> and what's interesting is that they put that and then we transition into this other exercise that we'll get into very shortly here so we're doing the meditation we're starting to remove these clothes from the pants and the head and we're naked all of a sudden the group's just we're just naked now we get another exercise the awakening i don't know if you want to touch on this one you're more proficient in french than me and you taught us um and noose um so i'll turn it over to you at this point oh boy okay this is the part where he starts making them essentially like look at their body in mirrors and stuff right but yes but very uh, specific parts so yeah he starts to tell everybody that they need to start 
exploring their bodies and look at your own anus. <laughs> um, and what was it like to like, what was the purpose again? It was like to like relieve yourself of like, sh like shame and shit, right? Or some bullshit. Literal shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Literal shit. I'll tell you what my notes say. Okay. Mirror exercise to look at your own booty hole and not be ashamed. That's my exact <laughs> yeah. note. I, I was trying to put it a little nicer, but yeah, that's, 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 uh, yeah, that's it. A lot of people of the members were saying that it was a very freeing exercise. After that exercise, they were a brand new person. It's somewhere in their body they've never looked at before, which is like, that makes sense. Like, whoa, you know, like you've been there this whole time. Like, but they're like literally laying in the grass, naked, mirrors, Just, booty holes. I mean, let, let's be real. This you really should. So Escalated. You really should look at every part of your body and know what it looks like, at least, because then you know when something's wrong. I'm only looking once and I know if I got a diagram and I'm good. I don't need to go back. Yeah, it's like a one time thing. Yeah, you doing it. But I feel like I feel like a one time. OK, once, one and done once a month one and done. This is what it looks like. We're good. Bye. Well, once it's weird and I'm probably gonna have to cut this, but I just had a really weird thought. I've seen other people's nooses more than my own. <laughs> right i mean same though right like other boobs other people's vaginas like i mean i see those things booty holes mirrors in the grass legs open sp spread eagle is that what it's called spread eagle legs in the air all the poses the mirrors the legs the spreading of it all i didn't need to do a demonstration but everyone just like it. and then everyone's like fucking them each other too right <laughs> I, I yes, they're getting they're getting there. They're just they're just this all the music video. Wait, what? With Rayal that he did, he had all the women like on him, and he was just playing the guitar, singing "I Love All Women." <laughs> Wait, in the episode one, oh. so funny! He's just strumming a guitar, singing like "I Love All oh, Women." Yeah. There's and like, like five girls, and there's five naked ass. Yep, <laughs> he loves them. He loves the loves girls. all women. He does. We love a. We love a good leader, you know? Well, at this point, we're looking at our booty holes in the grass. Rayal decides they need their own space. They have a um, a lot of land, a plot of land, and they name it Eden. And it's very resort-like. It's very, there's a pool. It's very Playboy Mansion. But in in France, I guess, um, like people just start flocking to Eden. And they're bringing their tents. They're tent, tent camping. I'm not sure who's allowed inside and who's not. There's just naked people literally everywhere. Like peepees, anuses, tatas, everywhere. It's just walking around. <laughs> and like, I don't know like what they do all day besides naked volleyball, having sex in front of people, meditation, the mirror exercises. This is my note. Basically, the Walmart version of Woodstock meets the Playboy Mansion ran by Charles Manson. That was my note. It's pretty. How many times do you got to look at your butthole? You know, it's at this time where he goes from his all black garb to his full white profit, cleanliness, organic aesthetic so he like overnight one of the members said he went from like the all black grungy vibe over to this white angelic airy type of vibe the cults are i literally can't even help myself the group's purpose at this time is to build an alien embassy and this gave everybody in the group a purpose and something to work towards and a big goal and they want to build like this huge facility basically like epcot to welcome the Elohims when they get to Elohims. planet Earth. Elohims when they get to planet Earth. Bridget, our beautiful friend from the beginning. Let me take you back. Character one, Bridget, the chemistry woman. She gets a special, special assignment from Rael. She is to go and influence the scientific community and let them know that the Rielians are in favor of cloning. Thumbs up, we're like cloning, cloning, we're good. And he has Bridget go and do this because she has the connections, she has the background for somebody in her position with this scientific background 
to be speaking on these matters gives it more clout. Do you have I a mean, scarf on? Do I have a scarf? Oh, no, it's your hair. It's my hair. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Bridget, she's on her special mission, and her personal mm -hmm. goals is that she wants to become a creator, an Elohim. Did I say that right? Yes. And that's just crazy. We heard in the beginning that she birthed the first cloned baby. So is she technically an Elohim? Is she a creator? Like, we don't know. So to wrap up this episode, Rayal has Bridget cloning people and selling the service of cloning. If you want to donate your DNA or have your DNA, um, if you want to be cloned, we need your DNA, and Brid Bridget will clone you. That's where we leave off. We see Riel in the present day. Do you remember that part in the very ending scene? Yeah, he's like grayed out, looks like almost the exact same. Yeah, <laughs> he's looking like old Jesus. And he's tan. He's walking on the beach in his white angelic garb after all these years. And he's looking brand new. And basically, like, under the guise or premise of, like, we're going to live forever. Cut scene. Like, you're telling me right now that that man is alive? On Earth? Because he's got to be, what, like, 80? Look, look, look this motherfucker up. He's eternity <laughs> because he's Jesus. Because he's Elohim. 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 That just makes me think of something from like Lord of the Rings for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. He was born. I don't want to like do any spoilers, but he was born in 1946. Yeah, he's like in his. Oh, my God. 1946. He's 78 years old. He's looking good, man. <laughs> Whatever they have going on, and I cannot wait to find out more. It is working for him. Yeah, that's I crazy. I might order a pamphlet. I might order some material. I did that once on Scientology on, well, not on accident, but then they like started like calling me and they sent me like 5,000 packets. Really? Yeah. Don't That's, do it. Don't do it. I wasn't like, in. I was, okay. I was president of the psychology club one time in, in college. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the Scientology website. They have like this whole like weird like museum. Have you heard of that? No. Oh my god. We have to go, but I'm so fucking terrified. Let me look it up really quick. Yes. Oh my god. It's called Psychiatry, an Industry of Death Museum. And it's in LA. And it's literally like full fucking propaganda. Multi million dollar museum. It's free and open to the public seven days a week. Is it here? Is it like a pop up one or is it there all no, the time? No, it's like, no, it's there. It's, it's there, like a brick and mortar. An industry of death, a bizarre free museum where teachers take kids to learn about the evils of mental health care. Brick and mortar front of the Citizens Commission of Human Rights, a mental health watchdog organization founded in 1969. The commission was started by a Hungarian doctor named Thomas Schautz, author of a book called The Myth of Mental Illness. It's giving, you're depressed, why don't you get up and do something about it? Um, I like it. A critic of psychiatry, he Kidding. spent his career arguing that mental illness was nothing more than a means of ostracizing outliers and that treating it amounted to any kind of abuse. Yeah, it says it claims it's been involved with passing more than 180 legal reforms in the psychiatry industry. It's allegedly given free tours to more than 250,000 people, 70 to 80 percent who are students or staff members. And it Although the museum fails to note it anywhere prominently on the premise, it's entirely funded by the Church of Scientology. Oh, so, no. Okay, so hear me out. We'll, we'll wrap up with this. I freaking was the president of the psychology club. We were, like, looking for events to do, and I'm like, okay, is there, like, a museum? Is there, like, some shit we can go and see? So I stumble upon this, and I'm like, wow, that sounds, like, literally fucking fascinating for our group to go and do, like, this crazy like obscure museum and like the history of like psychiatry and like blah 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 so i sign up for the information and i say that i'm with the school and they sent me a fucking 15 pound box stacked with pamphlets dvds workbooks like everything like a whole thing like i'm an ambassador 
and I had that shit hidden under my bed for the last like two and a half years because I like <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that <laughs> I'm serious this is a real story <laughs> what am I gonna do give them out throw them in the Burn dumpster it? Burn? I don't know. <laughs> There's burn bans in California. I just can't be lighting fucking. It's so much stuff. It's like a whole thing. It would be like a whole bonfire. Go to Home Depot, your favorite store that you like to look in every aisle, and get a big metal trash can. Put it in in the backyard and just to have a little, little little fire in there for a little bit. And like have s'mores, but then it's like have bad vibes. <laughs> like no, I got rid of it. I don't remember how. I, I was like. We were... I think I was donate? moving and I had a don't donate. That's my point. You can't donate. It. I know. It's like, what the fuck? What am I supposed to do? But Throw I in the ocean. I... No, Meg. Oh my God. But anyways, um, that's... that's episode one, guys. There's cloning. There's aliens. There's Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha. There's swastikas. There's Jewish stars. There's orgies. There's... There's orgies. There's, There's booty mirror, hole looking. Booty hole looking. <laughs> There's guitar playing. There's alien <laughs> embassy building. And um, Real's still live and kicking, which is f freaky to me. Because I picture the 70s so long ago. Like, it was, like, it's ancient. But that guy's, he's out on the beach. He probably lives by me. Who knows? Um, uh, so the only thing left to do here is rate okay. one being... It's pretty reasonable it all is kind of making sense um to, to five um which is call the fbi call the um authorities and um pray for help um just off the charts suspect as all everything i just feel like some of the shit that he's saying is just so fucking crazy but at the same time maybe step down to a four because like we i feel like there's been crazier cults and we're only in episode one. And so we're only in episode one. We don't know that much right now. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go with the four on four episode on one. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm with you there because I don't think it's a five out of five yet. There's a lot of flags though. The thing is, I don't know. There could be the aliens. He could have had dinner with the prophets. Like I'm not saying none of that's true because those aren't things that I know. So the other aspects of it, like the orgies and the butthole looking and like all that, like that's a little bit wild too, but hey, like maybe that's the fucking cure. Maybe that's the fucking secret and we're all here judging like, like who was the first person to eat an artichoke? You're <laughs> telling me you peel back those pokey ass things? Did you just eat it as a whole? <laughs> that's what I'm like, that's what I'm saying. There's someone who figured out some shit before me. So I'm, I'm gonna go 3.5. 3.5 out of 5 just because I don't know things and maybe I'm being judgmental and closed-minded maybe looking at your b-hole is like the actual cure like I don't know that not a doctor nor a scientist yeah so that's where that's where we end we'll see you next week with um another recap your support means the world to us and it helps us continue to bring these stories to light we value your thoughts and opinions so please leave a comment below until next time Stay curious and stay skeptical. That's what I meant to say. Thanks for watching. Meg doing her waving for people listening on the podcast. She's waving at you right now. <laughs> Bye. This is only audio, people. Bye. <laughs> Bye.